Einstein'ın doğumundan 100 yıl önce Fransa'nın hükümdarı Kral 15. Louis'ydi. Ama monarşinin halk üzerindeki ezeli ve mutlak hakimiyeti sorgulanmaya başlamıştı. Shark, leave the windows, forget the rain, we need air. Fransız devriminin eli kulağındaydı. This was the era of enlightenment, when intellectuals believed very firmly that the way forward lay in science. And they felt that one of the first tasks that lay ahead of them was to rationalize and to classify every single kind of matter so they could see how it all interacted together. Zengin ve genç bir asil olan Antoine Lavoisier, gündelik hayattaki her türlü eşyayı, dünyadaki çeşit çeşit maddeyi birleştiren temel bir bağ olup olmadığını öğrenmeye kararlıydı. Ayrıntılar konusunda takıntıya varan titizliği bir bilim adamı olarak Lavazia'ya faydalı olsa da sonunu hazırlayan da bu olacaktı. Monsieur Lavazia, you are, if my eyes do not deceive me, consuming only milk this evening. First you had a glass of milk, now you are eating a bowl of milk. Will you next move on to a plate of milk? Your precise observations commend you as a Lady of scientific curiosity, Mademoiselle. Most unusual. As you seek knowledge, so I shall dispense it. For the last five weeks, I have taken nothing but milk. Good <laughs> God, man. I would rather die than fast on milk for five weeks. Are you in the grip of some horrendous ailment? On the contrary. I am investigating the effects of diet on health. I'm sure with the greatest of respect to a member of the Royal Academy of Sciences, your gut must think your throat has been slit. <laughs> Whereas your gut count is no doubt petitioning the Academy for a widening of your throat. <laughs> Marianne, how dare you insult the Count? <laughs> Don't forget what the Count offers. Not just marriage, but think of how you will be introduced to all the salon. <laughs> you will be the toast of Paris. Would it not be a shame, madame, to burden you with the duties of matrimony before you have had a chance to experience your curiosity for nature? We all go through. It's getting rather hot in here. You really plan to marry the Amava? There is a plan, but it is not mine. Then I must contrive to save you. Lavazia, meslekten bilim adamı değildi. Aslında Paris Vergi Dairesi'nin yöneticisiydi. En büyük oluşu şehrin etrafına sur çekmek ve içeri gireni çıkanı vergilendirmekti. Ama hayatın temel ihtiyaçları olan ekmek, şarap ve peynire vergi koyması Paris sakinlerinin sevgisini kazandırmıyordu ona. Kuralları titizlikle uygulayan bu gencin arada sırada tutkularına yenildiği oluyordu. Lavazie 1771'de vergi dairesindeki bir meslektaşının kızı olan Marie-Anne Pauls'la evlendi. Böylelikle onu söz verdiği gibi kendinden 40 yaş büyük olan bir kontla evlenmekten kurtarmış oldu. Allow me to show you something. Lavoisier, I think, found his job as a tax collector really rather tedious, and the times he looked forward to were the evenings and the weekends when he could indulge his passion for chemical experimentation. And he called those times his jours de bonheur, his days of happiness. Madame. What will happen if I take a bar of copper or iron and leave it outside in the rain 
for months on end. Madame Lavoisier. Monsieur Lavoisier. The metals. <laughs> what will become of them? Is this a verbal examination? Prior to an examination proper, mm. sir? I merely seek the truth. Then you join with me, monsieur, for you know the truth. The copper will become covered in a green verdigris. And the iron will rust. I believe the term is uh, calcined. Most impressive, my charming one. <laughs> but let me press you further. Mm -hmm. When the metal rusts, does it get heavier or lighter? Why, sir, I think you mean to trap me. Oh. And perhaps this little butterfly should land and allow me to take a closer look. Every last citizen in France of sensible age knows that when a metal rusts, it wastes away, it gets lighter and eventually disappears. Ah, but... Ah, stop. I have not finished. Contain yourself, sir. There is more. In a recently published pamphlet by a brilliant young chemist, Antoine Lavoisier demonstrates that the iron combines with the air. It, in fact, becomes heavier. Most impressive. I intend... Now, whatever you intend, monsieur, I intend to be by your side. I will learn all I can about your science and become your worthy colleague. Marian kocasının yanında kimya öğrendi ama çok geçmeden onun çalışmalarına katkıda bulunmanın başka bir yolunu buldu. Çağdaş bilim araştırmalarını çevirebilmek için İngilizce öğrendi. Yaptıkları çalışmaları ayrıntısıyla kaydedebilmek için çizim yapmayı öğrendi. Laboratuvarı o idare ediyordu. Lavozye şirketinin yüzü oydu. Bütün çalışmalarda önemli bir yeri vardı. Monsieur, it is my great ambition to demonstrate that nature is a closed system. That in any transformation, no amount of matter, no mass, is ever lost and none is gained. Over here, please. This precise amount of water is heated to steam. This steam is brought into contact with a red-hot iron barrel embedded in the coals. From this end, we cool the steam. But interestingly, we collect less water than we started with. So clearly, we lose a certain amount of water. However, we also collect a gas and the weight of the iron barrel increases. Now, when we combine these two increases, the new weight of the iron barrel and the gas we have collected, they are exactly equal to the weight of the lost water. Ah, but is it atmospheric air, Monsieur Lavoisier? No. No, because I am measuring it to the very last grain. I can see that it is lighter than the air around us. And moreover, it is flammable. Voila. Water is made out of hydrogen and oxygen. So what he had done is get the oxygen to stick to the inside of a red hot iron rifle barrel. He was basically just making rust, which is oxygen and iron, but he was making the rust really quickly. Now that left the hydrogen, what he called combustible air, and that was just floating around as a gas. No mass had been lost, it had merely been transformed. And now he wanted to transform it all back into water. This is only the beginning. In the next few months, I hope to demonstrate that I can recombine this combustible air with vital air. 
and transform them both back into water. I will recreate exactly the same amount of water that was lost here in this process. It is my hope to complete the cycle, water into gas, into water. And not a drop lost. For a long time, Lavoisier had suspected that the exact amount of matter, the mass, involved in any transformation was always conserved. But to prove this, he had to perform thousands of experiments, and he had to do the measurements with incredible accuracy. That's where his great wealth from being a tax collector came in. He could afford to commission the most sensitive instruments ever built. He became obsessed with accuracy. Ama Lavoisier'in titiz yöntemleri açlıktan dilye dönen Parislileri öfkelendirmeye başlamıştı. I'm sorry. What time is it? It is almost time to receive Monsieur Marat. The Academy asks you to assess his designs. He claims to have made a great discovery. Oh, Antoine, have you forgotten? Oh, God. There was another charlatan with an idea to peddle. God give me patience. Monsieur Marat. Uh, monsieur. I have invented a device which projects an image of the substance of fire onto a screen. You see? Mm. When a lantern is shone through a flame, we see a shimmering pattern above the flame. My device renders the substance of fire visible. Have you collected it, the substance of fire? Have you... Have you trapped it and measured it? Well, no, but, but one can see it. I'm sorry, in the absence of exact measurements, of, of precise observations, without rigorous reasoning, one can only be engaging in conjecture, so this is not science. I am not given to conjecture, monsieur. Really, no. no. If you will excuse me, I, I am extremely busy today, but thank you. Thank you. So that is all? Then good day, monsieur! Well, let me guess, Mara. The king's scientific despot has decreed that your invention does not conform to the version of the truth as laid down by the Academy. Lavoisier. He talks about facts. He worships the truth. Listen to me, my friend. They are all the same, the Royal Academies. They insult the liberty of the mind. They think they are the sole arbiters of genius. They are rotten to the core, just like every other tentacle of the king. The people, it is they who will determine right and wrong. Don't worry. In my next pamphlet, I will expose this persecutor of yours. Lavazie yıllar boyunca eline geçen her türlü maddeyi yaktı, parçaladı, eritti ve kaynattı. Deneyler dönüşüm sırasında ortaya çıkan bütün duman, sıvılar ve tozlar titizlikle toplandığında kütlenin değişmediğini gösteriyordu. Sıvılar gaza dönüşebilir, metaller paslanabilir, ahşap, kül ve duman olabilirdi. Ama ne olursa olsun bütün maddeleri oluşturan küçük atomlar asla kaybolmuyordu. 
Bu çalışmaların en parlak sonucuysa oksijen ve hidrojenin statik elektrik kullanılarak yeniden suya dönüştürülebilmesi oldu. Fransız devrimi patlak verdiğinde kraliyet ailesi ve bütün soydular giyotinle idam edildi. To the French revolutionaries of 1790, Lavoisier meant one thing and one thing only. He was the despised tax collector who built that wall around Paris. Lavoisier bir vergi toplayıcısı olduğu için şüphe çekmişti. Onu ihbar edense eskinin başarısız bilim adamı yeni radikal gazeteci Jean-Paul Marat'ı. La voisier, je sais Lavoisier did is absolutely central to science and especially to equals MC squared. Because what he said is if you take a bunch of matter, you can break it apart, you can recombine it, you can do anything to it, and the stuff of the matter won't go away. If the mob burned Paris to the ground, utterly razed it, shattered the bricks into rubble and dust, and burned the buildings into ashes and smoke, turns out if you put a huge dome over Paris and weighed all the smoke and all the ashes and all the rubble, It would add up to the exact same weight as the original city and the air around it before. Nothing disappears. <laughs> <laughs> 